Welcome back to International Scale Model. I'm Lee. Uh, today we've got a review of something that um, I first got wind of about, I don't know, two years ago. I think Paul said something about it about a year and a half ago, something like that. Uh, that he'd seen one and he loved it and things like this. And uh, I thought, yeah, I agreed with him. I wasn't a, a tank model at all then, and I'm still not really now. But, um, you know, as, as an aircraft model, I thought, wow, that does look a bit awesome. Uh, so um, I, when, uh, I think it was Hobby Link Japan said they were actually releasing it again or getting a big batch of them in, I thought, right, I jumped on it and I bought a couple, one for me, one for Paul, because um, I know how much he loved it. So uh, but this is what we're going to be reviewing today. It is the EG, uh, EFGF M61A5 main battle tank. Summer Vente Phantom Elevate UC Hard Graph Mobile Suit Gundam. Gundam. Uh, so <laughs> a nice short title there. Uh, but as you can see from that picture, look at that. <laughs> that is a, a, an awesome beast. Now, uh, unlike a lot of my reviews, I have actually looked in the box of this because I've been waiting for this for quite a while. It's been pre-ordered for about three months, I think. Um, and I have to say, this thing is enormous. I mean, it's like, I would say it's on the same size as a 116 Tiger. Um, but uh, I put uh, Jag Panther that I'm building at the moment next to it and it was dwarfed by just by the hull. So uh, let's have a look inside so you guys can have a look as well. But um, I'm really excited to go. I haven't gone through all the plastic, I've just had a look at the top hole. But let's have a look now. Okay then, so the EFGFM 61A5 main battle tank Semi Vente Phantom Element UC Hard Graph Mobile Suit Gundam 135 from Bandai. Uh, now, as I said on the intro, <laughs> this is a tank that um, I've been after for quite a while since uh, uh, Paul brought it to my attention oh, about a year and a half ago and said, oh, I love this. But they're about, you know, can be anywhere up to about 150 quid on eBay. So I thought, well, yeah, it's great, but I'm not really a tank guy. So it's, you know, for me, I couldn't justify the price and everything. But um, when I saw someone pointed out that these were going to be released, I think it was Gary Winton again. He's a great source of these um uh hard to find kits from japan and post like so thanks a lot gary um you got another winner from you mate um it's this is it's just you look at it you just think i've got to have it it's so different that it really is awesome but there's have a look at the box up and get it all in shot for you okay it really is uh uh, just makes it look immense it really does look immense on that and it's a lovely piece of artwork and I, I wouldn't mind the picture itself actually the picture would be really cool but anyway <clears throat> on the on the outside of the box it's all in Japanese uh, unfortunately but we got it looks like a little bit about the story here uh, as we go round, just some more info now on here it does show if you can see on there um, it shows it made up and it looks like there's some extra parts for it. Now, it looks like there's some photo etch. You can get some photo etch. I've got to say, I've admit, I've had a look in the box, there is no photo etch in there. And there's like there's these little links to the chains and things like that. I don't know if they're on the kit or not, but uh, it looks like different markings and uh, this looks like what the photo etch is for around here, the basket and everything. But it looks like this is all aftermarket parts. So it'll be interesting to see when we get inside the box what it is. But as you can see, it's one of it made up. It really does look the business, it really does. And then you get the three figures in there as well. So let's have a look inside the box. Uh, as usual, I'm just going to take all the plastic out, pop it on the side. Ah, oh, I tell a lie. There's the photo etch. Didn't see that before. <laughs> Excellent. Right, so let's pop that over there. Now then, uh, I think I'm going to need a, a knife for this for sure. Uh, I'm going to start um, at the, with the upper hull, okay, just so you can get a size, a feel for the size of this model before we get stuck into it. Now, as I say, I've had a quick peek in this box, but that is all, nothing else. Um, but uh, just to give you an idea, this is the upper hull. Okay, now um, it doesn't look... The plastics, it's actually quite thin and feels quite brittle plastic. Um, now I've never built anything from Bondi and I don't know if anyone else has Bandai. Um, but uh, I mean the moulding itself is very nice indeed. Let me zoom you in a bit so you can have a look. Yeah, it's going to be slow, there you go. Okay, so as you can see, it's got some nice moulded pieces on here. As you go through, nice detail and it's, there's some very 
you can just see that there, that rough, as you can see it, hear that, some very, there's some rough parts, so that would be like um, non-slip covering, and there's some here as well, just trying to get it in the light so you can see it there, see? So that's a nice little touch, in fact it does not all over, it's uh, it's uh, just in, in places, but as you can see, very nice indeed. Now then, what I want to do, just before we go any further, is just give you an idea of how big this is. Now this is just the upper hull, okay? Now I'm working on a, a 135 <sighs> Jag Panther at the moment, okay? I'm just going to put this next to the hull. <laughs> okay, now this is, this is a, <laughs> a Jag, no, the Jag Panther was not a small tank. But as you can see, okay, that's from the front of the fender to the rear fender, it is actually the same size as the whole upper hull of the uh, of this uh, M61A5 MBT. Now that just goes to show how immense this thing is going to be. It's going to be absolutely enormous. Um, now uh, let's get on to the next bit because before I wax too much lyrical about this. Uh, in the same bag, I like the fact that it's all separately bagged as well. In the same bag, you've, you've got, then got the uh, lower uh, turret ring and everything. Uh, commander's hatch by the looks of it. All very nicely moulded. There doesn't seem to be any uh, idea of flash at all. Even on these teeth that are all around here, very well moulded. All up together, very nice indeed. Now let's go on. We've then got the turret. Okay, the turret itself, very nice indeed. Now this is quite, quite a low profile, as you can see. Um, but once you pop it on there, <laughs> that is going to be a beast. It really is. Look at that. That is going to be such a beast. Oh, that way, sorry. It's going to be such a beast. <laughs> right. So, uh, so yeah. But again, <clears throat> there's lots of these little uh, non-slip areas that you can see there, just in the light. So very, very nice indeed. Some great little uh, touches on there and very well moulded. It's even got the, the weld marks and everything, cast marks, very nice indeed. Very well thought of. Um, we've then got some metal in there. The lower hull. And again, even underneath where you'd find most <clears throat> Most kits are uh, bland and nothing. There's still uh, panel lines, engraving, and things like that. So it's a really nice touch as well. Again, it's all it looks actually to me slightly warped. If you can just see, there's a slight curve to that. I think there's a slight warpage there, but nothing. Uh, nothing I won't sort out. A bit of glue won't sort out. Uh, now also in there was this little bag. You've got four steel pins. Now it'd be interesting to see what they're for, whether they're for the wheels or some other system on the on the uh, model itself. But we'll have a look once we get into the figures. I'm sure we'll find out uh, into the instructions, uh, hopefully. Uh, we've then got, these bags are excellent as well. They're very good quality bags. The plastic is not going to get damaged in those. Uh, we've then got the side walls. Uh, again, this is um, for the wheels and everything, well moulded. I love these little vents. They just zoom you in there, as you can see, very nice indeed. It's going to take a wash really well, those ones. And then you've got the uh, uh, the uh, armoured sides and everything, the skirts. They look very nice. Again, they've got these little uh, things in inside here. Oh, very nice. I've got to say, I'm very impressed with that. I didn't think, you know, if it was gonna, it was gonna be a Bandai kit. I think, well, are they, are they, do they do models? Are they really into their models? Because they usually, um, I think they do a lot of Gandam and things like that, but not proper scale models as you'd call them. Uh, but so far, so good. Uh, you've got obviously one of the barrels here. Lots of little odds and sods um, and greebles. Again, all very well moulded. No flash at all. Uh, it doesn't seem to be any um, pin marks or anything like that, EPMs, uh, but that barrel's quite large, <laughs> as you can see. I mean, that's a good six inches. Um, let's just measure that again, so just so you can see. Oh, seven inches. God. Well, I'll have to let the wife know that. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, so uh, 
that's really nice indeed. Uh, very, very nice um, and a good size. It's going to be enormous. It really is. Uh, we've then got a, a mirrored sprue of that one, so I won't bother opening that. We've then got this a lot of plastic in the box. It is quite expensive. I think I've probably already flashed the price up. I think it cost about £60 post, and I can't remember if I bought it from HLJ or Lucky Model. It's one of the two. Uh, so in here, but I will say, a lot of the sprues... It's about the fourth sprue I've seen that's slightly warped like this. As you can see, that's twisted, that one. So it's a bit... And as you can see, I'm just hoping all the parts are going to be straight. I mean, as long as the hull and the turret and the lower hull are, are reasonably straight, that's not going to be, be any matter. But these are obviously for the wheels. Um, these are like, like what Tammy do, so the wheels are movable and everything, so that's interesting. Uh, you've then got, looks like, rear of the turret maybe few more greedles, uh, greedles, you've then got the smoke discharges by the looks of it, uh, an antenna, um, and a few other odds and sods and acts there and everything, but apart from that, it looks all very nice as well, but it's a bit of a shame about that, I've got to say, it is twisted quite badly. And that one's not going to matter because there's lots of little ones on there, so it shouldn't matter too much at all. I do love the sound of crisp bags, don't you? Uh, right, this is the wheels. Now, I'm trying to... Oh, there is two. two. Oh, that's lucky. Nearly missed that. Uh, looks like so the tow cable. Uh, it's a nice bit of string. It's burnt on either end to stop it from fraying, which is nice. Uh, so, we've got that as well. A little extra. Two bags of wheels. Obviously, mirrored sprues. Um, they're all very nice indeed. Nothing to, to write home about, but then reasonably good quality. They're a nice big size. They really, really are chunky. Um, so uh, interesting to see how that's all going to build up. It really does look like a monster of a kit. Uh, we then got a little bag with uh, some figures in that. But it looks <laughs> that's very strange, isn't it? <laughs> it's two different colours. Very strange indeed. It, it almost looks like that's an afterthought. That sprue's an afterthought. I mean, and there's another three colours. Like the beret, the beret is already pre-painted and everything, so that's a bit strange. But um, yeah, so I, I don't know what the uh, why they've done that. I don't understand that. But anyway, the figures themselves. Let's zoom you in a bit so you can have a good look. Uh, the figures themselves. You've got the hands and everything. There's a little bit of flash uh, around the hands, which you might need to tidy up. Some nice expressions on the hands and everything. All different expressions in that. Uh, you've got this is just two figures on this sprue. Um, it looks like you've got the commander, and there's a, a man standing on the back here. Okay, and the commander. You've also got a driver as well. Um, so I would imagine these. Oh no, there's one, two. There, all three are on there actually. Tell a lie. Because yeah, you've got three faces, three heads. Yeah, so that's the whole sprue. Um, you've then got the driver here, which is obviously this guy. Uh, the commander which is standing up very well moulded, some nice detail on the creases and things like that uh, and uh, I, it's, I've got to say there's hardly any flash on that at all, there's a little bit on the hands but a very very tiny bit faces seem well moulded as well uh, I don't know if you can see that because there's quite a lot of glare on there but um, I'm quite impressed with those, they're not bad figures at all but I think that's what Band uh, Bandai specialise in is the, all their figures and everything isn't it if I remember rightly so they should be good uh, we then got uh, another big bag of, this is a lot of plastic, quite a mountain actually. This is going to be fun to put together. I th I'm actually looking at this as a fun build. Uh, because because it's anime or Gundam or whatever, you've pretty much got full reign, uh, you know, full artistic license on how you want to make it look, which is what I like. And I know Paul's looking forward to his one as well, which should be with him in the next day or so. Uh, now this is obviously you've got um, the, uh, the the personnel carrier at the back of the ba the basket at the rear around the rear turret. Um, so again, all these little bits. Now, as you know, I always check for burr on these little round bits and things like that because you know you can always tell a good kit by the amount of burr on there, and there's hard, there's none, not a single bit of burr on those round pieces. Absolutely fantastic. Um, so the railings are all good, <clears throat> and then uh, these look like the rear engine parts on the rear. No, these are the front. These are front, like <laughs> raised bits on the front. So excellent. And again, lots of non-slip coating and things like that. 
Fantastic, really good. Um, and that sprue is actually not warped, so that's very nice indeed. Now the tracks, as you can see, are these rubber things. Now they're this type of rubber, not the Tamiya ones. Um, <clears throat> these are really flexible. So it's very important, uh, because of the type of tracks these are, uh, whether there's any um, flash on them at all. And I've got to say, there is not a jot, not a single bit of flash on those tracks at all. Oh, they're very big, they really are chunky. Um, so those are going to be interesting. I've never done these rubber rubber ones before. Um, I'm sure some of you have. Um, so it'll be interesting to see how they work out. Now, because of these great big um, skirts, you're not going to have to worry about adding sag because you're not going to see it full stop. So you're only going to see from the front fender to the rear fender. Uh, so I think really the only trouble is they're in two parts. I'm hoping, um, I won't know until I put it together, but I'm hoping that you can, let's see now, I don't think that's going to work. Your, the join is going to be here and here on the back because they're exactly the same length. So you're going to have a join showing there. So we're going to have to do the join at the bottom, I would imagine, so no one can see it or right at the bottom of the front or something like that, which is a bit annoying. Um, you would have thought they would, would have thought about that and said, well, we'll do one longer. We could have two separate sprues, one long one, one short one. Um, but they haven't done that, uh, which is a bit of a shame. Uh, because it just means that the joint is going to be in a really awkward position. It, goes, it looks like it'll go together all uh, well, but I would imagine, ah, that's what the uh, metal pins are going to be for. Ah, so with the metal pins, that might be okay. Be interesting to see. I'll be, when I build it up, I'll have a look at that. But those metal pins from these actually are actually how you join these tracks. So you might get away with it. Be interesting to see that. Um, hopefully no staples will need to be involved. Uh, we've then still got another bag, look, woohoo, this is tons, absolutely tons of your money. In here we've got the decals, which we'll do in a second. And uh, we've got another little sprue here, and we've got like, um, we've got the machine guns, uh, handguns, a couple of different types of handguns, and uh, we've got a tripod for, for machine guns, things like that, and it looks like some engine part, uh, big old gun there, so looks like there's two machine guns on the upper turret. This looks which that can be confirmed with that. So yeah, so it's funny these little handguns, I wonder where they go. I don't know if they go on the personnel or if there's some scattered around somewhere. But very nice indeed. All looks to be very well moulded. The, the weapons, let's get you in there so you can have a proper look. As you can see, are very well moulded, very crisp. Okay, there's no blurriness or you know soft edges or anything like that, and there's the pistols. So very, very nice indeed. So quite impressed with that so far, I have to say. Uh, we then got the decal sheet. Okay, so not a lot of decals. Now the decals themselves are quite flat, um, which is nice, especially on a tank. Uh, the carrier film is cut reasonably close to the decal, but uh, there is an overlap, um, and you might want to trim that up a little bit, as you can see, I don't know if you can see that there, on here. There's a little bit of overlap. I like to trim my decals now, I have to say. It just, um, it just makes it that little bit better. The thing is, though, I have got some 135 Citadel uh, um, transfers, which uh, I think would go very well on here. Because it's I can make it however I want, um, I might even try going for something completely different, nothing that's on here. I might use these, obviously I might use, so I think these are quite funky. Um, but I don't know about like um, platoon markings and things like that. It, I could do anything I want with it, so, because it's mine. Right, so what else have we got? We've got, uh, I'm not going to open this photo etch, but um, some very nice, this is obviously all the the back for the uh, carrier at the, at the rear. Uh, all very nice indeed, very, very thin photo etch. Uh, looks like some seat belts for the driver, a few other odds and sods as well. But very nice indeed, nice little touch that. You, you kind of got to expect a bit of photo etch in most kits these days, I think. Um, it's, pro it's getting to be the norm. Well, we have some clear parts, so let's have a look at these. <clears throat> now, these are obviously for the driver's things and everything. Um, it looks like we've got a bit for the upper turret as well. 
and the turret ring, that's nice. You, you've got the, the commander's um, ring and everything. Excellent, really nice. And it's uh, it's it's clear, it's very nice indeed. You shouldn't have any problems. It's nice that you've got headlights as well, the, the, the light covers here. Um, you haven't got the indicators, they've just got the main lights by the look of it. But uh, very nice indeed. Nice bit of glass, that. Uh, it's a lot for a tank, that's for sure. And uh, finally, we come to the instruction manual. Oh, there goes my spitfire. Uh, now this is, it's magazine quality paper, very th nice and thick. It's uh, larger than A5, smaller than an A4 size. Um, it's all in Japanese, there is no English on it at all. Um, now as you can see, you can see the scale of this uh, with the Gundam figures that obviously go with this as well. Now. God, can you imagine the size of the Gundam figures? Be, well, you wouldn't be able to get them in a shop bigger than that box. Uh, so they would be enormous if they were in the same universe, if you could get hold of them. I um, don't know if you can or not. But uh, opening up, here we've got a, a gatefold on the front. Um, we're looking here. It tells you all about little machine guns. Uh, it tells you a lot about these figures in Japanese. It'd be really interesting to get a little translation on that. But as you can see, it all built up. looks absolutely fantastic. Uh, inside, uh, we've got a, a colour um, thing about weathering, um, transfers, where the, the decals go. Yeah, all on here, all the decals, all this on the front sheet here. Bit of photo etch. Oh, I've got some chains uh, for the smoke dischargers, which is excellent on the photo etch. And then you've got, uh, this is putting the, oh, I see, this is putting the figures together. This is what they look like before painting. And after a wash, so what they're saying is you don't actually need to paint the figures, just put washes on them and things like that. Mm, I think uh, could probably do with a little bit more painting, I think, just to make it a little bit more realistic, a bit shiny for my liking. Uh, but it's saying how to weather, paint inside there, and things like that. Um, obviously, that, that piece of tow cable there on this side, we've got I don't. I honestly no, <laughs> just so I don't know what it's trying to explain. But you've got a colour call outs. Now the colour call outs, I have no idea what they are, um, but saying that, I think really you can get the gist of the colours that you need to have. I mean, this looks like a desertized scheme, uh, which you can just go by the chieftain colours and things like that. It's not going to be much different. And you've got some other ob obvious colours here. I don't know what colour scheme that is at all because it's all in Japanese completely. And you've got a, got a colour guide for the figures. If you do want to paint them yourselves, then they've got a, a colour guide for them as well, which is very, very nice indeed. Uh, so nice to have a colour bit there and you can see what it looks like built up. Absolutely fantastic. Uh, so then you've got a sprue map. Uh, it's not numbered, but it does go through all the what's on the sprues and everything. Oh. Excuse me. All right, as we turn the page then, it starts by building the side walls of the lower hull, putting them together, and we go on. It's all building the lower hull up, so the lower hull is a build in itself. So again, you're just then you're putting in the uh, suspension arms and everything, uh, putting the wheels together, put them on now, obviously you don't do that. Uh, the tracks, as you can see with the tracks, you do use those little red rods to link the tracks. It's saying don't glue them. Uh, so it'll be interesting to see what they go. When you put it together, well, I think it's a decision you have to come to when you're making it, I think. Um, but with those little things on there, uh, it would make, if, as long as the join's okay, it would make it quite easy to, to sort out. So that'd be very interesting to see, I've got to say. Um, the trouble is, with these great big uh, skirts, it's going to be, I would have to just put them on, paint, uh, put them on with PVA or something, then pull them off if it's not too hard to put the tracks on and then pop them back on properly and then weather. That may be the way to go with that because otherwise you're going to have an absolute nightmare getting that track on there, uh, I think. Uh, then it just goes on to say you should pop the, the, the upper hull on, um, all the greebles, things like that. Um, Moving along, we've then got more greebles, etc., etc., etc. Then popping, the, putting the side skirts together, uh, and then popping the side skirts on last. So I would say you might be able to get away with not putting those side skirts on. Oh no! Uh, it looks like these portions go over the side skirts. Be a, again, we'll have to wait and see until we get to to that part. 
It's then got a brief guard. It's got uh, oh, it's got a like, little ruler. That's excellent in there. I uh, wish I could read Japanese. Um, then you've got tools that you needed for the next part and the PE and everything by the looks of it. And then it's putting the turret together, upper and lower, then the barrels. Uh, and then putting the photo etch on the turret and everything, the basket at the rear. And again, the rest of it is just putting greebles together, uh, PE chains, how they should go on and everything. And then putting the turret on and then popping the machine, doing, putting the machine guns together as a separate entity and then popping them on last, yep. It's a very nice indeed. Um, again, I have no idea what that's trying to explain. Uh, but then you've got uh, other bits here. You've got these barrel rests and everything. Why are you not putting that back there? I don't know. They may be... I mean, on the picture they're not on, but on here they are. So it may be a case that they're movable. Uh, I'm not 100% sure. It does look like they have this joint, so that would be interesting to see as well. You've then got some more figure painting um, ideas. This is posable and everything, but I don't know, again, what what they're trying to say with these. Uh, I think this is actually putting them together. There's parts on the sprue, obviously, uh, and where they go and everything on the on the model. Uh, pro modeler, real advice in Japanese. Uh, again, I don't know. I think it's just showing you a bit of weathering, how to weather it and stuff like that. And uh, again, it looks like, again, with tonal variation and everything, that's sort of just giving some ideas of some variations you can do with the tones and shades. Uh, so as you see, nice set. It's a shame they haven't got these in English because uh, it looks a nice instruction manual. Actually, I really like the look of that. It really gives you a. It looks like it explains the whole process from start to finish, which is really good. It's a nice touch, that. So well done, Bandai. Uh, but overall, uh, I have to say, uh, if you can see over here, um, just over there, there's an absolute mountain of plastic. Uh, really is, uh, and I've got to say, for the money, I think it's definitely worth the money. It's such a different subject and something you probably won't get uh, see again. This this great big two barrel um, uh, tank. Uh, I wouldn't worry about the phys physics of it. Uh, I think it would be quite hard press if both barrels fired at the same time. It would be interesting to see what happened to the tank. I mean, the stresses involved would be phenomenal. But saying that. It's a great piece of, of what if or sci-fi or whatever. I'd class that as sci-fi, I've got to say. Um, and I love sci-fi. So I think it's a definite recommend if you're into something that's a lot, little bit different and you're not, you know, after the historically accurate stuff and everything, I think it's definite buy. £60, I think it was. I did get, I got stung massively for the tax because I bought two of them. Um, the tax was an extra 35 quid uh, import duty plus the £13.50 Royal Mail con fee for delivering it. Um, so, uh, it's a bit of a shame, but it's a, that is a total thumbs up from me. I mean, it's an excellently moulded kit. Um, no flash, no burring, no nothing. I, I, it looks like it'll go together really, really well. And uh, I can't, I for one can't wait to, to get stuck into it. But I think I'll leave this till next year once my weathering techniques are, are honed a little bit more, I think. But uh, that's uh, that's the EFGF M61A5 main battle tank Semavende Phantom Element from Bandai in 135 flavour. Thumbs up. Take care. Bye-bye.